AI images can look incredible, but the moment you try to build out a sequence, they fall apart. Nano Banana Pro and Gemini 3 change that. Today I'll show you how you can take a single image and export an infinite amount of consistent angles using just a single prompt. You get the same character, the same world, the same style, shot after shot. And of course, once we can do that, we finally unlock the possibility to create sequences that feel real. I'm AI Samson and welcome back to the channel. We're going to build this up in three levels. And with each level, you gain more control. Now the first step on our escapade of storytelling is to create our character. This is the base image that is going to inform the entire process of our film. And for this, I recommend you show your character at least upper body, clear lighting, a clear pose, an informative background, make sure the face is fully visible, and as much of the body as possible. Now you can create this base image in any image model that you like. You can start off with Nano Banana Pro, but you can also use Midjourney, which is one of my favorite AI image generators because I love the core aesthetic of this. Now to make this process as easy as possible for you, I've put together a foundational base prompt that you can use to generate images like this. You can simply switch out any of the variables you'll like, and you'll definitely get an image that's going to work with this process. Now, I'm going to leave a link to every single prompt that I use in this video in the link in the description below, and you can download all of those entirely for free. That's just my small gift to you this holiday season. So you can take this prompt, it will work across multiple AI image generators, now I will be using the following image. I have this beautiful warrior princess from the Amazon who will be leading our adventures. So now the next step is to use Nano Banana Pro to generate a whole series of images with just a single prompt. Now there is a very useful prompt for this that we are using and it's long and you simply need to copy and paste it from the document that I'm providing into the prompt bar. So you can come into the prompt. This is version one of the prompt that we're looking at. This was originally created by the creator on X called Tech Haller. So shout out to him for his wonderful work on this front. Now I will be using Google Flow for Nano Banana Pro, but I'll also show you a way that you can try this out entirely for free. So I pop the prompt in. The next step is to make sure we include our reference image. So we just go to upload and we pop in the image of our protagonist. There she blows. Now what I like about Google Flow is that you can select up to four image outputs at once. And this is great because it allows us to get a whole different array of images and we can select our favorites. So go ahead and pop that in. Whilst that's loading, I'll show you the alternative free way to use this, which is using this inside of Gemini. So you can use Nano Banana Pro for free inside Gemini. You simply pop it straight into the prompt box, upload the image just the same. I'll do a slightly different image for variety here. Let me show you it with a animated shot. This is the other great thing, that this works perfectly well with animation too. And send that in. Now, my version of this image got rejected and that was because I had slightly too much of the human skin displaying. So I've gone ahead and rerun it with a slightly less revealing outfit. Now, if you are interested in uncensored models. After this video, watch this one, which is all about the latest completely uncensored AI image models. But for now, let's return to today's main agenda. And you can see we've got every single shot here laid out beautifully. Now to give you a little bit more context about what's going on behind the scenes with this prompt is that it analyzes the composition of the image and then it creates a grid of this image with it in different scenarios. So it gives very specific sets of shots we get an extreme long shot, which is the first shot in the top left, followed by a long shot and then a medium long shot. And then we have further shots that are outlaid in a grid format. This means that we have a whole variety of different angles of our beautiful protagonist, and we can then use these to generate full size images of each of the scenes. Now you can see I outputted four versions of this, and one key thing to note is that sometimes it doesn't output the annotations on the shots. And these are quite important because it really helps us on the next step, which is where we export each of these frames individually. So if that happens, just go ahead and rerun it. You can also pick out your favorite. Now, 
I quite like this one in particular. And the next step is to add this to the prompt. Now the next step is to extract the shots that we like. And we can use that with a simple prompt, which is extract the still, and then you can put in the name of the frame using the annotations. So I would quite like to get out the low angle shot. Now again, we can get out multiple versions of this, pop that in, and just while that is loading, let me show you how well this came out in Gemini Pro as well, with our animated version. We have a senior flower pot here, in all of his different situations. Now, as you can see here, we have an absolutely stunning image, and it maintains exact coherence to the original prompt and to our base image. Now, just to note that this doesn't work 100% of the time, just to let you know, in case you have any issues and you're a bit confused as why it's happening, especially if you're just running one image at a time, you can see that out of these four, two were, I would say, 99% accurate, one was about 70% accurate, and one, I would say, is a bit of a failure. Now, I can run this again, asking for a different image. And you can do this as many times as you like. The whole idea is really to go through and export all of these images that you want to then turn into your final sequence. And there we have it. Now we have this medium long shot. And this is where things get exciting because now what we can do is we can turn these images into video. And the best way to do this is using a start frame in our video creation. And that means we define exactly how our video starts. Now, I will show you how to do this in both a premium tool and a free one. So let's start off with a premium tool, and that's gonna be Google VO3.1, and we're using that inside Google Flow again. So the way to use that is to go to frames to video, and then we simply add the first frame. I'm using this lady. You can add in a prompt to define the action. I recommend here thinking about the character movement, the camera movement, and also any atmospheric movement. For example, trees swaying. So we can pop in the prompt, woman shoots bow static shot, and send that in, making sure that the first frame is the one, of course, that we've generated. Now to do this entirely for free, I recommend using Grok Imagine, which very kindly gives us a opportunity to create videos entirely for free at the moment. And to do that, what to do is come to grok.com forward slash imagine, go to upload file, insert the extracted still, make sure you have video selected. And what's great about grok is one, is that it's very fast, it's free, and it also has a much lower censorship than Google VO 3.1. And if you're interested in Grok Imagine, there is a video I've got on that, which you can watch after this video too. Links are all in the description. So let's Take a look at these together, just to compare the outputs between the free and premium version. First of all, we have Grok. It works well, there is good physics, it maintains the scene effectively. The only thing I would point out is that she doesn't really look like she's holding the bow correctly here. She's just slightly holding in between the two, but it works very well. Now for the premium version, for those who are looking for luxurious AI videos. And as you can see, certainly the details are finer. Though I would say that there is a little bit of uh, physics issues here with shooting the bow. You can see that uh, as it looks like she goes to shoot, the arrow does not go. And if this happens, suddenly I suggest that you rerun the video, which I will do, and you get out an entirely different output. Now, here's where things get very exciting. And what takes this method to the next level is being able to animate from one shot to another. And we do that using first and last frame. Now this feature is currently only available in VO 3.1 and other premium AI video models. It's not available in Grok Imagine, but what it does do is it gives us complete control of the cinematic techniques that we're using. Let me show you exactly how to do it. So what you need to do is you need to start off with a first image that's gonna start us off. So we're gonna use this shot that we extracted as the first frame, and then we're gonna use this one as the last frame. So with Google Flow, you can simply press add to prompt, and you can see here, we've got this as the first and this as the final. Then you can simply enter in a basic prompt, even just transition between the two, and go ahead and send that in to. And when we do that, we get this. And the next step is to repeat this process for different shots. Now, we can continue to use the first and last frame approach, which then allows us to combine clips seamlessly together. So, the important thing to do there is to make sure that you use the last frame 
of the previous sequence as the first frame of the next sequence. That way, when you put these two clips together, like this, there is no obvious cut, and we get this smooth, one-shot storytelling dynamic that is so immersive and powerful. This is the dawn of real AI cinematography. We're moving beyond just pretty images, and now we have real filmmaking grammar. Wide, medium, close-up, story beats, and continuity. But that's not all, because we can take this further. We can add an extra layer of complexity that gives us more storytelling power. So, what's the issue here? Well, we have a series of rather disparate shots. These are of the same character, they are of the same scene, but there's no connective narrative that brings us from one shot to the next and through the sequence. They seem somewhat unrelated. It's more like a montage rather than a true story. And for that, we're going to use version two of this prompt. And what this does is it adds a sequence of specific compositions for each of these shots, which gives us a much stronger storytelling narrative. Now, this prompt was in, taken from TechHala and enhanced by an individual called Underwood. So let's go ahead, pop that into our prompt bar and repeat the process. So we're going to use a slightly different image to start off, but the same character. And I'm going to send that into the machine. Sit back and relax as AI does all the work. Now, what's going on under the hood here is that it is leveraging the power of Gemini 3 to define and create a story just from our first image, and then use those to define the exact frames that are going into our final sequence. So it's taking the image, it's creating a story, and it's breaking that story down into nine different shots that will tell that story more fully. So instead of just having multiple angles of one character in one scenario, it creates a much more fully fledged piece of narrative. So now we have this shot sequence outputted, and as you can see, it gives us much better storytelling capabilities. Each of these shots starts to give us a little bit more of a sense of where this story is going. We also get better uses of zooming into parts of the character and scenario to explain what's going on. I put this in for a few ones. This one is probably my favorite. So we'll export a couple of frames from this using the same method. You can reference the annotations. So we'll do that, extract. And then we can animate between a couple of these and we get out this beautiful sequence. Now, before we dive into the most advanced method, I'd love to introduce you to another approach to this entire problem. Now, this is a different workflow, but it gives you an extra opportunity to explore this concept, as well as the chance to do it daily with free credits. Now, this method is particularly good if you're looking to include it with graphic design related work. And that is today's sponsor. Let me introduce you to Ideogram. This is an AI image generator that helps keep your characters perfectly consistent across every scene and project. Let's take a look at an example together. I created a character. Let's call her Mary. I placed Mary in completely different settings, from a futuristic Tokyo skyline to a cozy coffee shop in Seattle. And her look stayed identical, even to this delicate mole above her cheek. No manual tweaks, no guesswork, just one character seamlessly appearing across all my work. Whether it's for social posts, website visuals, or branded assets, or even an AI influencer, Ideogram lets you generate the same character across multiple environments with total consistency. It's perfect for maintaining brand identity and storytelling continuity, saving you hours so you can focus on bigger, better, more creative projects. Now, if you're ready to elevate your workflow, then try Ideogram for free and see how easy character consistency can be. But, of course, we can take this further. Why not level up and bring in more power? And that is by actually defining the precise story that we want to tell. And for that, I have crafted my very own prompt, which allows us to put in a short synopsis of a tale and ask Nano Banana Pro to then export us nine images that give us the main coverage of this story. Now, the key here, is that it maintains the character consistency, but it also builds out a fully fledged narrative arc for us. And this means that we can take our concepts, our ideas, and put them in. Now, the way this prompt works is first use it in Gemini 3 to write the prompt, and then we export 
export that prompt and use it in Nano Banana Pro to create the images. So let's do that together. For this process, the most advanced, it requires two inputs. The first, of course, is the base image, and the second now is a short synopsis. So for my synopsis, I have a tribal woman from South America is walking along a coastal path when she comes across a large, gigantic python. She then battles with the python before impaling it with an arrow. She then takes the carcass of the snake back to her village. So we have a few story beats here for our young heroine. Now, you can put this in at the start of the prompt. This is the third prompt from the guide, which is version 3, which is my director's cut prompt. And you can basically post your synopsis at the start and then the prompt afterwards. I recommend putting this into Gemini. Now you'll then get out a massive prompt like this, which will have all of our different shots defined. We can take this and create our image with it using the same process. Put the prompt in, followed by our foundational image. Send that in. And now this is where things get so unbelievably exciting because we have the entire epic mapped out here with each of the shots perfectly, exquisitely defined. So we have her walking along the coastal path. We then see her engaging with this gigantic python and we get that lovely moment of true satisfaction where she punctures the snake's skin with the arrow and this lovely overarching high shot of the snake dead before dragging it behind her to showcase it to her tribe. So let's take this and animate it, put it all together for a final epic. And this is exactly how it turns out. Now you're probably wondering, can any of this be automated? And that's where things get interesting. And something I want to share with you is a tool by the Door Brothers who are fantastic AI individuals. And what they've done is they've created this tool which automates part of this process for generating different storyboards. Now, you simply upload an image and go to storyboard, ask it to generate a grid, and it will create a set of images like this. Now, What's good about this is it automates the process a little bit, but the downside is, is that you don't have as much control as you do with prompting it yourself. But I wanted to show it to you because it's definitely a nod of what's to come, where we get these automated processes for creating complex workflows like this. What we've done is found a foundational image, a base image of our main protagonist, showcasing them in their elegant form. We've then taken that to create a number of different shots using the power of Nano Banana Pro. We elaborated on this process by bringing in some story structure before bringing it all together with our director's cut prompt, which allows us to define the base image and a story structure and get out nine accurate beats that maintain coherence between our characters, our locations, and our stylistic intent. We explored how we can then use start and last frame to animate sequentially between these different shots and make sure that we get a lovely one-shot sequence that tells an entire story. And that's the power we now have. One image can become an entire scene, an entire story, an entire world. Now, go build something wild. And if you are not subscribed, I do invite you to join the channel. It will be a pleasure to have you along for the journey. And watch this video next, which is all about uncensored AI image models. Because one issue with this is that <laughs> there is a great limit to what we can get out. But most of all, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching to the end. And I want to wish you a delightful day.